Praise the Lord. You guys can hear me well? Amen. Amen. Uh, first of all, I want to thank the Lord Jesus Christ, the head of my life, that have changed my life. I'm standing before you today, uh, not because I know it all, but I meet a man called Jesus Christ. That's why I'm standing before you. And I'm a child of God that God have called me to his mission. And uh, I'm following his voices through the Holy Spirit. I'm a believer of the Holy Spirit. I can't do nothing without the Holy Spirit. And I can't move without the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit is promises to Jesus Christ by the Lord. Uh, by the Lord, And the Lord Jesus Christ have promises us as a disciples of Jesus, the Holy Spirit. And because of that, the importance of being a believer, that means the power rested in the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit is the source of the life that you're living every day. You don't have the Holy Spirit. You're a dead man, dead woman walking. You can come to church all your life. You can go to hell through this church because your heart is full of darkness. The Holy Spirit's job is to clean our hearts. So I'm not talking about the Holy Spirit this morning, but he's present in this house. I just want to clear the stuff to you to understand. So um, my name is Lucy Bonner. I'm from South Sudan. And... Uh, I'm really done, you know, what tribe and South Sudan, all this stuff doesn't matter to me when I come to understand uh, the kingdom of God. Because I'm a child of God and all this name, make with name and people call, do this stuff, I'm from this tribe, doesn't matter to me because my tribe is called Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. <laughs> my tribe is called Jesus Christ. So I want to acknowledge that to you. I know that we are all nation here. Jesus is for all nation. That is a beautiful thing. I thank God for Pastor Dr. Josh, uh, Joseph. Joshua, we thank God for him, and I thank God for the first lady, Margaret. It's my first time meet her today, this morning. I even don't know, but when she walked to the room, I can feel the presence. This is the first lady of this house. Somebody give praise to people of God. Hallelujah. <laughs> praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And I thank God for this a great opportunity that I've given it to me by uh, Pastor Noel and the First Lady Easter. So um, as I'm coming here and my daughter, Nadit, right here, this is uh, one of my daughter that I uh, come to the class of ministry, growing in the work of God and the Lord are doing great things. She has come a long way and I thank God for her life. She connected me with Pastor Noel and uh, so the first lady Easter, we've been, I've been teaching in the class in London online. I never saw her only yesterday. I meet her face to face. I hear her voice. I thank God for them. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And for all my Sudanese brothers that are here and other people, or all people of God, I honor you this morning in the name of Jesus. If you're a minister, I honor the work that God is doing in your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. So. I come here in late uh, 96. I've been risen in Austin, Texas. And uh, when I come in this country here, just like Pastor was speaking the testimony yesterday, I was laughing because some of the testimony he's speaking, I was in that place too. You know, I was not, never looking to come to America in my life and never prayed even to come to America. But uh, one thing that I have experienced uh, brokenness uh, after my first marriage fell, and I was very young. When I had my first baby, I was 21 years old. And after um, uh, the baby and then the marriage, just suddenly everything become to go wrong. I promised God that I will not be a woman that will be having a different man in my life. But the enemy have a plan to destroy my life. So uh, when that happened, I become angry and I become bitter in my heart. My living to my country, out of the country because I really want to take my life away. And with this baby, because in Africa, you know, when something happened like that, the shame become to take over you. I become shame, the society become not good to me. And even if people are not thinking wrong about me, but I carry this thing in me, it become very pressure of life uh, where I try to take my own life because I was a nurse and I was using this volume that making people sleep. I used to shut my own self. So I almost want to take my life out of here. But I thank God that God have a purpose in my life. But because I don't understand. And when I don't understand, I do stuff that is not good. So I decide to go and have a higher education in nursing in the Middle East. So at uh, that time, the Lord have used me. I used to be um, one of the friends that writing uh, magazines. I used to write uh, is, uh, the word of God, a good comfort word. But I really don't understand what I was doing. So these people... They send me a visa to go over there. You know, a visa, they just don't give it to you. Then the Lord have opened a door for me to go to Middle East. I went to Middle East. 
and left my mom with a baby, but I was broken all this time, and I was bitter. I was dripping blood inside of me because broken people, you know, they can look good but dangerous in the heart because something happened in their life, something that you didn't plan in your life. You're growing in your family house. You have a good family, good mother, good father, and suddenly you're married to somebody even you don't know, and everything becomes to go wrong. And sometimes we think that we marriage our dad because he's been good to our mom. But the people are different. So this thing become a, a piece of pain in my heart. So I carry around. I come to church and go. I have these problems. And I don't fight people. And I'm 54 years old. I never fight nobody physically. But I fight inside. So the fighting inside become a major problem for me. And then nevertheless, again, I came there and I fall to another problem where I was not ready for it and then get pregnant and then get married quickly because when I cover that I am a good person but really it is so many broken inside. So this marriage, the one I have, the second marriage who flew all the way to America here with a lottery visa don't know that God have a plan for me to come here and I really don't want to come here so I win the lottery visa come here the problem is start from there until here. One thing I want to tell you this morning in this testimony what is not of God is just not going to be good. Anything that you, you choose, God doesn't choose, is not going to be good. I don't care how much you paint it, how many you put the hair, you do. It's not going to be good because it is never God. God does not accomplish the things that he has not established. Anything that you establish, it is going to be exactly like you. So those problems come here, and I will pray, God, why you do this? Why you do this to me? My mama is a very spiritual woman, and she keeps telling me, don't, you know, just sit by yourself. And I, I feel like, no, I need somebody so bad. And that's bring to the second brokenness. The first brokenness was not clear, and now it's second brokenness. And this second brokenness is every day fight, bitterness, cry. Seven days a week I come to America, even don't know what I want to do. In one week I want to go back to Sudan, never know English, never speak English, never know the people. I come here, become to see all kind of people. I think in America is all white people. I come here, there are some black people. I say, who is these people? You know, it's become everywhere. You know, all things become like, a, you know, you, it's a culture shock. When you come in the place, you don't know nobody. No mother, no mother, no cousin, no nobody. You enter in the land that you never understand. I see myself like um, Abraham, but Abraham was having a good relationship with God. I don't have that relationship. And then because of lacking of the relationship, the bitterness is starting to arrive. The problem is becoming, I have a little kids, you know, don't know English, don't know what to do. But today, I am thankful. This English I'm speaking to you. The English I'm speaking to you, I never went to any man's school to learn alphabet of English. But I cried and I went to my knees after this brokenness. I said, God of heaven, if you are living God, change my heart. Speak to me. Why you bring me over here? Give me this language a little bit so I can understand what these people are speaking. I went to go and do the drive allowances to pass the drive allowances. I went like a seven times. It still fell six times, the seventh time. The Holy Spirit, only the one passed that for me. It was not me. It was God. It was God. So because of the true understanding of those things I go through, those the one you, I don't know if you bought my book. Yesterday I have my testimony writing because people don't understand. When you get in this place, the thing you just all is mad. You don't have problem. Believe me, I have a hell. I was living in hell. But I thank God for his grace and mercies that will bring somebody out of that kind of problem and wash them and become to use them. So God, hear the prayer. So the life changer because I surrender to Jesus Christ. Because I said there is something more than this. You know, I was grow up as a Episcopal church. We worship almost like Catholic and some when I went to school and then I become Catholic and then I come to Beirut, I become Baptist. You know, I was just everything. And then I become to find out that actually it's not about this name, make with men. It is about one name uh, that overcome all the demon and Satan in the world. Uh, and that name is called Jesus Christ. Uh, and that's why I don't have no division with every church that is carrying the name of Jesus. I can go everywhere. I can feel like I'm at home. I feel at home here because the name of Jesus has been carried in this place. Because of that name, that's why we become too relative. 
That's why I don't have anybody like this. Is the, No, no, no. We are all tribe of Jesus. When you know Jesus, I'm from that tribe. And that's what I'm talking about. So those things become a problem in my life. And then I become to have an earlier sickness in my body. Then I have the higher blood pressure. I have depression. In America here, you have to go and sit before the counselor. Give all your money for somebody to speak to you, to get healed. But the Holy Spirit tells me, you're not sitting before nobody. You're not taking the medicine. If you can listen and study your water, I can heal you. And God become to walk in my heart. And he says, sir, after I finish with you, and I'm going to use you as a Christian counselor for broken heart people. And that's what God is doing today. So this English, I'm speaking to you because I was broken. I think all Americans is talking about me. You know, when you have your problem, you think everybody's talking about you. Even if nobody say anything. You know, nobody say anything. You just mad at the people. Oh, they look at me. What they're thinking about me. Nobody think because you got some problem in your heart. Your heart has some problem. Oh, pastor preached today that he's talking about me. Oh, the first lady don't like me. No, you got some demon huh, that's sitting in your heart. Huh? You need to get overcome from this demon. And that is a problem. And now the body of Christ, because people don't touch these areas. We are just all good. No, we are not good. Our heart has some broken. We carry some past with us. Some people have like a million past. I counsel people every day. One time I'm counseling a man is talking to me with his wife. They was mad at this person. I say, where is the person? They say he died. I say, when he died? Ten years ago. I say, man, you're going to get out of your head. The man died ten years ago. You're still angry at him. You're a dead man walking. This man is dead already. Listen, somebody is not exist anymore. They put him in graveyard. Because he did something to you, you're holding him. He's already not here. Why holding that person in your heart? For what? You know? People say, I can't wait when I go, I'm going to go to court. I tell the people yesterday, there is no court in heaven. Every court problem is stayed down here. If you have a problem with people, fix it before you die because there is a hell and there is a heaven. You can go to hell with your problem because God is not mistaking to send people to be a lawyers and police and judge and all this stuff. Because everything God have it down here, there is a purpose for it. You have a problem with people, then you go and go to court, fix it here. But when you go up there, there is no problem fix. Neither you go to hell, neither you go to heaven. The people that is going to go before God is going to be us that is stand here and preach to you. God is going to bring his home uh, to the judgment. The judgment of God established in the house of God. Who is in the house of God? These preachers, these pastors, these apostles, these prophets, those speaking liars. God is going to bring you here. And God is going to, what I tell you to tell people and what are you doing to the people. And the judgment of God is too is strong in us that preach to you the word of God. Because we are responsible to send the voice of God to you. Or neither we send our own voices because we want people to please us. Because we want people to make us look good. Because I can do this, I can get money from you. The devil is a liar. We are going to humble, we are going to let the Holy Spirit do his work because it is not by might or power, but the Spirit of God, he can do his work, he can change the people, he can restore the people, only if you agree with God's word. And because of that, I honor the name of Jesus. My life is all testimony. I can sit here just, even not preach, just preach about testimony. But testimony helps. Because the Bible tells us, and they overcome him by the word of the testimony, by the blood of the lamb. Because the testimony is showing that there is God in life, and God is at work, and God is moving. I mean, standing before you here, I should be a dead woman a couple of time ago. The accident and the sickness enter my body, and then I prayed, and I said, I know this is the enemy. When you're a child of God, and you're anointing, the devil will not leave you alone, because this body, the devil wants the body, and God wants to live in this body. He's going to fight you. And when you carry a strong anointing, believe me, your problem is going to be very strong too. It's not going to be easy. So today, I'm going to speak in some areas, but my message that I come with it here, healing and deliverings, and set free restoration, to those that one are broken. But this morning, the Holy Spirit is putting in my heart to speak about authority of believers. And the reason that we don't understand, uh, because we lose the authority in the house of God. And
And the Holy Spirit used me as a teacher, used me as everything, because it's not my work. It is whatever that he wanted to happen. And whatever that the mind of people, the heart of people, because my Bible tells me that God read the mind of man and he see the heart. So when your heart is, your mind is, the message that is coming according to whatever that you have in your heart, because it is, I don't plan anything. I don't know nobody in this city, in this room. I don't know only Pastor Noel and, uh, and the first lady and my daughter here and some of our brothers here, Sudanese people here. But I don't know the rest of the people. I just met with Pastor yesterday. I just met just a couple hours with the first lady. Whatever God is going to bring here, it is not of me. It is of him. And if you know God is a living God, you can be free. You can repent out of your sin. And God can talk this problem. I'm not telling you everything is going to be beautiful. You know, there is problem. A storm is going to come. But because the storm that is going to come, God is with you. In the midst of the storm, God will help you through it. The fire will come. God will be right there. You're not going to jump. You're not going to run from the fire. You got to walk through with it so you can become what God wants you to be. People run from church. I want to tell you something right now. If you're looking for church running because this church is bad and this church is good, there is no church in the plain of earth is perfect church. And that's, that's the truth. There is no perfect church. But there is a perfect God in the people that he rested in them. And when you carry a demon, you come here, you think like somebody have a problem, you go to that church. Some people, they have a million church they go through. They live from church to church. They go to the other church, they have a problem there. Oh, that pastor was not good. People don't like me here. I come to this, oh, this pastor is not good. They don't like me. They go to the third church. Oh, no. You got to sit down. Huh? You got to take control of that demon in your heart. Huh? You got to get delivered. You, I will never open to understand the truth of God until you take control of your own brain and your heart. If you don't take control of that thing, you will live this life, come to church. I don't care how much you sing, how much you usher, how much you preach, how much you do because you got a demon have a hook on you. And that demon can allow you every day to come to church and shout. You can shout every day, but there is no freedom in your heart. You sit here, you look at people, Oh, they have problem. Oh, I sing today. Oh, the pastor sing today. Oh, the people, I don't like that song. No, the demon don't like the song. That demon don't like the song. Oh, they don't sing my favorite song. It is not about our favoring everything that have the name of Jesus. That is the key of life. So this is the problem that I find everywhere. People moving from place. People call me, oh, this pastor, this. I said, everybody bring the name of pastor to me. I am going to bring them and bring that pastor down because God called me to reconciliation. You bring something, you, you don't bring that to my ear because the word of God can never lie. The word of God can only speak the truth. So today, those things, the one you're struggling with in your heart, there is a word that can penetrate that thing out of your heart. Because if he can bring me to this place and change my life in America, I am grateful and I'm thankful. People live in America right now, especially we African. I don't know about other African, but side, the one we have, they got some problem. You know? Oh, I hate this America. Oh, I, sh I wish I never come here. Be thankful, man. Be thankful. Because you even don't have a car back home. <laughs> now you're driving a car. You can't even thank this God. You don't have a bank account. Now you open bank account. You don't have a driver license. Now you have a driver license. You don't have a house that have a bathroom and have a light. Now you have this. Be thankful. Be thankful. Be thankful. Say, Lord, I thank you. I thank you, Lord. I thank you. You may go through pressure, but don't blame God. Blame the demon. And some of us, we invite this demon. And then demon have a complain against us too. And that's true because we are trouble ourselves. Amen? We're going to enter to our message. That's not my message. Let us stand to our feet very quickly. I just want to touch that area so I can find myself. Hallelujah. Let us get to the spirit. The Bible says God is a spirit and for those that one shall worship him, shall worship him in the spirit and truth. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we just surrender our heart, our mind into your hand. 
Father, I thank you, every soul that is standing in this room, you already know them from day one, before you formed them in their mother's womb, and even before you formed me in my mother's womb, you know, this day, I will stand in this altar. And Lord, I thank you, oh, Father, Lord God, what the things that you do can be amazing to us that we understand you. For some will be confused, for some will be destruction in their mind, but Father God, I pray that, that the power of the Holy Spirit, that ministry and set your people free may come and move in this room in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, not by might or power, but by your spirit, oh Lord, you have given us promises, Lord, and your promises is yes and amen. When we humble and when we repent and when we surrender to you, you heal our heart, you heal our body, you restore us because demon and Satan, warlock and witchcraft have no power over our life. You have speaked your word. You say Satan is under our feet. Lord, today we're taking our authority back to say Satan is under our feet in the name of Jesus. Lord, I praise you and I give you the glory because you are not a man that you should lie, neither the son of man that you shall repent as you speak your word, it shall come to pass in your people's life as we believe. Lord, I pray for someone in this place, the faith may stretch this morning in Jesus' name. Oh, Father, I praise you. The word that will come uh, and will go forward, oh, Father, will never go to invoice. Uh, it shall accomplish his work uh, in every creation that call up unto you, Abba, Father, God, uh, we surrender to you this morning. Thank you for hearing us. Holy Spirit possesses my tongue. As I preach, oh, God, uh, anointing this tongue, uh, to speak only what you wanted to be here this morning in the name of Jesus. You promise as you say from your belly shall flow the rivers of water. What is your word, oh God? Flow this morning. You speak, oh Lord. Bring the power of healing. Delivering. Set someone free. Remove the pain out of them heart and doubt of demon out of their mind. And I come against every voice that will interrupt this mission to be silent in Jesus' name. Father, I praise you. Lord, I give you the glory. Thank you for hearing us and thank you for answering us in Jesus' name. You may be seated. Give him praise as you sit in. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I am a mother of four. I look little, but I'm not that young. I am young in the spirit. God is uh, renewing the spirit every single day. Amen. That's what the Bible tells me. So uh, today I want to talk about the authorities of believers. And as the pastor said, in the end, I'll be ministering. Um, those that want, they want a healing. Those that want, they are uh, going through some problems in their life. I will be praying with you this uh, after I finish this morning. Um, my message today is going to be about authorities of the believers. And uh, the authorities of the believers today, church, uh, we have a lot of stuff missing in our church. Why? Because we missed our authorities we uh, don't look to the things that God have given it to us. God have created us and God have, have a potential in everybody in this room. Uh, there is a purpose in your life. God is not mistaking to bring you from where you come from. God is not mistaking even to have you here this morning because there is a potential in your life. Some of you, you don't understand. Some of you, you don't know. But we understand that God purpose in our life shall come to pass only when we agree with him and only when we surrender to him and only when we overcome other stuff so this authority of God of believers uh, then can become to function in our life you know many people lose the authority the Satan take your authority the people take your authority people control your mind they tell you what to do you become a slave of other people a slave of the world when you a believer there is authority of God right in this Bible and I'm going to give it to you this morning. You can write it and you can pray it and you can declare this word to take the authority out of your house, over your children, over the things that God promises to you, over your health, over everything because authority of believers is powerful. And these authorities come from Jesus Christ. So because of that greatness of God in our life, let us go to Ephesians. We're going to read Ephesians chapter 2. <clears throat> Ephesians chapter 2, 
and verses 6. Pastor, do you have a reader in your church? No? Okay, get one for me. I like to, when I'm going through this, I want to go quickly. And if it's not, I will. Um. Amen. Amen. So, um, that's okay. I'll go to find somebody. Amen. People are scared to read the Bible. How are you going to be a believer? Amen. <laughs> Amen. Tell me when you're ready. Just one. Okay. And hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places. In Christ Jesus. Amen. This is Paul is speaking to the people of Ephesians. And the word of God that he's speaking, because Paul was a murderer, Paul was not a perfect person, Paul had some problem. But after the Lord have delivered him, after he take his authorities back, he become to know how to address uh, the authorities of believers because the children of God have lost a lot of many things because the enemy have entered the house of God and the people of God lose the authority. So he said, he had raised up us up together and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. The heavenly places, always the Holy Spirit tell me, you don't have to die to sit in the heavenly places. Because the kingdom of God living in us and the heavenly places that we have, uh, heavenly places, it is the word of truth that you take in your heart. And it's the word of truth that deliver you and set you free because you go to the world but you look different. Uh, your behaviors are different. Your characters are different. Uh, you respect other people and you respect other nations because you have the authority of Jesus Christ uh, that have raised him up uh, and put us to it together. You cannot be Christ-like uh, and have a crisis. You know, you, you, I, I know I am Christ. People say, oh, I am Christian. And um, I know Jesus. Many people know Jesus by their name. But they don't have a relationship with him. Uh, that's why the body of Christ uh, is missing that authority. You will find somebody will have the name of Jesus in the sticker, put it in the car. And then when they're driving her and somebody light is red, they're hooking and they're yelling, they can put the window down to argue with that person. Those are not the character of Jesus Christ. Because we need the character of Jesus Christ that will give us the authority. The authority of Jesus Christ that will sit together in the heavenly places. She rested in your heart. When he rested in your heart, you carry with you everywhere you go. You don't change her. Because God that will save her is God of yesterday and today and forever. So we change because problem happened to us. But God does not change her. But if you truly born again, a spirit filled child of God, there is nothing that you can be changed for because you're walking in the authority of the highly places, what is Christ Jesus. So because of the Christ Jesus, uh, that we're walking in this authority today, uh, the Christians have raised up together in the, the, the places like that, uh, but you find out that the heart of Christians that care, I know Jesus, uh, the heart are all different. They allow the other authority to enter them heart. The authority of the world of darkness. You know, you know the, this is not my church. Oh, I'm going to come here, but I'm not going to be free. If they're singing, I'm just going to stand. You don't have no authority. I feel sorry with yourself that you're a believer. Because we are believers, we have the spirit of God. Huh? I don't have to come here for the music to serve for me to pray. I don't have to come here because I have authority and lead by the Holy Spirit. Huh? And when I come from this place here, this is a place where we come together to worship God. I am going to come and praise and thank him for bringing me here first. And I'm going to thank him for the message that is coming first. And Lord, I'm going to praise you for everything that is going to happen today because there is authority in my life. We're getting together today. So when we become to set our mind in that area, the Holy Spirit becomes easy to move. Many people have the Holy Spirit, but the Holy Spirit don't have them. I'm going to say again. Many people have the Holy Spirit, but the Holy Spirit doesn't have them. I'm going to explain to you what does that mean. 
Because your behavior and your character is not showing the character of God. You take the Holy Spirit, you control. Because just like I come as a visitor, pastor and the first lady can take me and lock me in the room over there. So I don't have a right to go to that room. I don't have a right to bathroom. I, that's the way the people do it. They have the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit don't have them. When the Holy Spirit have you, you're going to be meek. You're going to be nice. You're going to smile with the people. People is not going to be your problem. Your problem is going to be a demon that is ruling the people because you are walking in the authority. Jesus Christ are uh, involved with every kind of people, even he eat with the sinners. But because we become too religiously minded, uh, we don't even want the sinners when Jesus Christ went to cross uh, because of the sinners. But when we know that this person sinned, we don't like him. No, we're going to pray. Uh, we're going to ask them to get delivered if they want to. If they don't want to, then they're going to sit with that demon until the day God will knock the door for them to come out of that demon. But the problem was because we want to show the people we are so holy. The holiness, if you cannot tell the truth, you're not holy. The holiness is not because I wear this long dress huh, and I can cover my head. That is not a holiness. The holiness is established in the heart of men and women huh, that have been delivered and set free huh, and filled with the spirit of God huh, that give them the power to do the things of God huh, in the authority of Jesus Christ. I used to be a very quiet woman. You can never even hear, even my family today, they say, this one, we never know she will be a preacher. But who knows the mind of God? Nobody. The Bible tells us in the book of Isaiah 55, the Lord said, my thought is not like your thought, neither my ways is not like your ways. As the heaven is higher, my thought is higher than you. I can think only around here. I can't think for you. I can't think for you. You can't even think for God. People try to fix that. My prayer cannot change the mind of God because God determined what he says. Uh, and God determined the word he put in the Bible. I need to change. Somebody say, I need to change. Because it is not God need to change. It is you need to be changed. Because God already determined. He said, this is Sunday and this is Monday. This is Tuesday, Wednesday. You know, the people say, oh, I don't like Monday. God is not going to feel sorry for you because you don't like Monday. He's going to take you back to Sunday. The Sunday is still going to stay Sunday. Monday is still going to stay Monday. You need to change. Yeah. And that is the problem we have. We don't want to change, but we want God to bring everything in our lap. You want money? You want to work three jobs and five jobs. And God said, bring every problem to prayer and I will help you. But you want to do it in your own. And then you want to come to church and you depress. And the money that even you work, you can't even give $10 to church. You give it a $1. And then people want a $1,000. You're giving $1, you want $1,000. And that is a problem because we don't have authorities. When we have authorities, nothing matters to me. I love pastor's testimony yesterday. This praise was not giving free with Mozungu. I know Mozungu. When I went to Uganda, they're calling Mozungu. I take some people with me from here. So that's how God works. God can turn his stuff around. I never thought one day I'm going to be a businesswoman in this country. The Lord have let me open the beauty shop. Don't know English, but a little bit. And then I went to school of beauty shop when even I don't know English, but I study in Arabic. When the teachers speak, I write it in Arabic, and I pass the state test because of God. Because of God. And then... I went to business class again, and I passed my test because of Jesus again, not because of me. And after all these years, after my children raised and all this stuff, and the Lord told me to sell this business, I was upset for one year. I said, I am making a thousand a day, 700. I have people working for me. I have a barber. I have a stylist. I have people braid. I have people do the nails. I have my suit. God, how are you telling me to sell? Do you see that? God already knows what is best for me. But when I don't have the authority that I am working in it, the devil will put his stuff on me, think that I am doing this by myself. No, it is God. The one year passed, the next year come, again, I hear the same voice. God doesn't talk to us every day. And I want to let you know, those are the ones that say, oh, God, tell me, God, tell me. The devil is a liar. God is not your friend like that. God doesn't talk like that. All this, oh, I'm prophet. Come today, I'm going to prophesy. That is not God. I'm sorry, but I'm telling you the truth. I try to help your brain and your heart. Yeah, because if you want to know the truth of God, the truth of God, it is all in this Bible. 
I don't pursue people. I pursue God. I pursue God. And people are not my problem. Demons are my problem. And that's just the truth. So, people give a $1,000 to somebody have the oil and water. And nothing happened to them. I'm not putting these people down. I don't know what they're doing. Huh? But because I know my God like that. Because there is no way to hear the voice of God if you're an unholy person. If he's coming to talk to you, he's going to warn you from your unholy self. The person that talks to us every day it is the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit talks to us every day because the Bible promised he will be your teacher, he will be your friend, he will lead you to everything. That means you're working in the morning, Holy Spirit is going to talk to you. Afternoon, he's going to talk to you all day. And people mislead the voice of God and the voice of the Holy Spirit. When God talks, it's completely different. And the when Holy Spirit talks, it is different. And I know this difference. And when you talk, I know it too. You know, you can talk, I will know this is you talking. Because this God can never lie. So because of this authority that we're talking about in the body of Christ, everybody that been having a potential in their heart, God wants you to have a great thing in your life because he knows uh, the good thing that in your life. The authority that we have, we must have to know. The people of God have to know the word of God. So let us go to the book of uh, Hosea. Hosea chapter 4 and 6. Why we miss the authority in the body of Christ? Because people lost the lack of knowledge. There is no knowledge of God. People come to church, they're the same people, there is no change. Everything that changed, it is only the clothes, the hair, the, you know, the look change, but we inside of us don't change and we're missing that authority. And that is scripture is reading, it says, if my people that are called by my name, you know, people, not, not uh, excuse me, um, the people, are, my people are lack for the, uh, destroying for the lack of knowledge. You don't have the knowledge of God. Excuse me, so many scriptures in my hand. I went to Second Chronicle. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about Hosea chapter 4 and 6. So these scriptures are very powerful for you and very powerful. It will help you if you can read your scripture. Just read one day because this is the promises of God to every believer. To every believer, you must have to have the word of God in you. Otherwise, you will be nobody. You can carry this Bible, but the Bible inside, you never know what is in the Bible. You don't know. Before, I even don't know, I carry a blue Bible in Arabic from South Sudan until to North Sudan, until to Beirut. I bring that Bible. I never open, but when I have the bedroom, I take that Bible. Somehow, I know God is going to help me. I put it under my bed so I can sleep, but I never read what inside. Some people even have the Bible sit in the bed, but they never open that Bible. You lose your authority like that. Because you're losing the, you know, you are going to the, you are perished because the lack of the knowledge of God. You need the knowledge of God in your life uh, so you can have the authority back in your life so you can walk in this authority of God. Because of the authorities of God that have been giving it to us, the book of Ephesians, actually the church in the structure is in that place uh, where we need the authority in our life. Uh. Nobody will grow up and just let them kid sleep all day. Don't wake them up, especially in America here. Oh, don't whoop them, don't talk to them because the police. No, no, no. We're going to take control of our home because we are children of God. We are believers. We're going to train our children in the God ways. When they grow up, they will not depart from it. My children are grown. My oldest is 30, 33. He just got married this year. So the other ones, they're still in the school. But they have the word of God in them, the seed. When they're little, because of the brokenness and divorce, I was bringing my children in our church like that, four in the morning for two years straight, the Holy Spirit telling me. I wake them, I bring them to the church, bring the blanket. When they're sleeping there, I'm sleeping in the altar. Nobody was there. And all the people, what's she doing? She crazy. And look at me today. Because you obey and you walk in the authority of God. It is not about the people, what people say about you. Do what God says. I used to come to altar all the time uh, when, because God tried to clean me and people sit there and judge you. Oh, she just want to show. Oh, she want the people to see. I don't need people to see me. Every eye here can see me. Why I have to come up here? Because God is telling me to come up here. Hannah, the woman that was broken inside, she was not bearing the kid. She was so broken and angry. She come to the altar to speak her problem to God. When you come to altar, you don't come to people. You come to pour your heart. You come to open your heart. You come to walk in, in authority. You don't come to please nobody. And that's why we're missing today. People have to be forced to come for prayer. 
man, <laughs> this is so funny because people don't know him. So I'm not going to take too long here, but I want to give you some scriptures of the authorities. Now, go to Romans chapter 5 and 17. Romans chapter 5 and 17. And if you can read, sweetheart, that would be great. For if by one man's offense, death reigned by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness, righteousness shall reign in the life by one, Jesus Christ. Amen. He said, for if by one man offer, Jesus Christ offer himself to go to the cross because we are sinners. If anybody never seen here, let me see your hand. If you just perfect, you never seen in your life. Let me see in your hand. Let me see. I'm in the right place. Because we know. You know, we know. Before, when I don't have Jesus Christ, tell me I'm a sinner today. I will fight with you in my heart and I will be bitter at you for all my life. But the day I come to understand, I become to see this thing here. He said, for one man offer, dead ring by one, much more than which receive abundance of the grace and the, of the gift of righteousness. Jesus Christ even don't know this thing that happening with us. We are the one enjoying this gift because he went to die for you. When somebody gives you a gift, you the one enjoying that gift. It is not him. So now we're enjoying this gift because uh, he's the one went to the cross for our sin uh, and the abundant grace of God uh, is working in our heart because we are children of God and we must have to take the authority and control the things in our life back because Christ went to cross for everybody. Nobody went to cross people. The one you pleasing other people, you can't please God. I'm talking to you today. You please that person even though that for you one day. Jesus Christ is the one died for you. It is not the people. So that's why we have a problem. We don't have authority. Demon will make us come in the church and sleep right here. Don't hear no word of God. We will be here, but we're sleeping in the house of God. Because the demon don't want you to hear the word of God. You will sit, the, your, your mind is fighting. People want to go to the bathroom when the word of God is coming. People want to touch something. It is the spirit. That is not them. It is the spirit in them rejecting the word of God to make sure to keep them just in that area where they are comfortable. The comfortable people, they're dead inside because the enemy is taking the best out of them and they're losing the authority. That's why Christ died for you, giving you much grace to live with him. Grace and abundant grace. Every day, God gives us a new grace. The grace that God gives to us, God doesn't give us the leftover. He gives us freshness every day. Whatever happening today is a fresh. Whatever yesterday God didn't give it to you, that's how much great God is. The more you become obedient, the more he poured the grace for whatever you're doing. What I am doing right now, it is only the grace of God. Because there's nobody preached three days in the row if you don't have the grace to do it. But the grace of God is there pouring to us because of Christ. That's why we must have to walk in the authority. So we all... In the place where we have to know that God loves us unconditionally. And the love of God for us is not going to stop because God loves us. Let us go to Ephesians chapter 3, 14 through 19. And I'm going to close with one scripture. And I'll be done here. Ephesians 3, <clears throat> 14 through 19. For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, mm -hmm. that ye, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height mm. and to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God. Hallelujah. That is so clear because of Christ. So for this cause, for this cause what I wear this dress, listen, the reason I wear the robes are because the Holy Spirit have to warn me. He said, it's not about you. It is not about your body. You're going to cover any time when you minister. 
And that's why I have a problem huh? when I minister in the regular cross, I have a problem. You know, I'm not religious. I'm a believer. The religious people do crazy stuff sometimes because they condemn the people. They put people down. They're better than anybody. They want you to do stuff such a kind of way and you're going to be straight. No, we need that. This for such a, this kind of reason that Jesus Christ, they say that, uh, you know, say, for this cause, I bow my knees into the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. You don't bow your knee to nobody. You bow your knee to Jesus Christ. When you bow your knees, some people, they think like that. The new believers say, I'm going to come so pastor can see me today. Oh, pastor, hey, how are you doing? I'm in the church today. You are a pleasing man. You're not pleasing God. His job is to feed you. But you try to show him, like, if I don't come today, you know, pastor is going to be it. Oh, I'm not going to come to the church. That's your problem. Because you're not buying your need to him, you buy it to God. If you come or you don't come, that is going to be your problem. It is not their problem. Their job is to feed you. And then he goes, he says, uh, and he says here, he says, I bought my need to because of the Lord Jesus Christ. He says, of whom uh, the whole family in heaven and earth uh, is named. We are children of God. The whole family and God in heaven, he knows everybody know him in this room today. And that's why we're here. And then here, that he will grant you uh, according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with mighty by his spirit in the inner man. Hallelujah. God is the one who will strengthen you. It's not the people. Some people give the money so people can make them. It's not going to happen. It is the spirit of God is going to strengthen you because you believe in him. And when the spirit of God becomes to strengthen you, know, and you know this thing, you don't pay money for it, you will not be having a jealousy of nobody. Like pastor say here, this is a man of God. His heart is open because this word is living in him. And he knows the gifts are different. We don't fight. We don't get jealousy because, oh, I'm going to stop this person because I want my name to be in this city. They don't have to come in my church. If they come here, my people, because the church is never of God, you establish that thing. When you establish your own thing, you will protect, you will fight for it because you don't have the strength. When God establishes it, God will give you a grace to protect everything. But everything that you establish, you always forget, you fight. Oh, don't go over there. You, my people, this church belongs, because it's never you. The Bible says, if my people that are called by my name, the people belong to God. These don't belong to you. People belong to God. If they humble themselves, God will answer their prayer when they repent. And then he goes, he says, the 17 says, that Christ may dwell in your heart, not in your head, not in your house, not in your clothes, in your heart. And that's why the issue of the heart. If your heart have a problem, it is better to repent from this bitter heart so God can heal you, so Christ can dwell in your heart. Christ is not going to dwell in your heart when you have a problem with everybody. Christ is not going to dwell in you when you can forg not forgive the people. When you bitter at the people, is not. Christ dwell in the purity and repentancy of the heart, salvation in you, and the spirit of God will become to operate in your heart because God have a power to deliver every piece in your heart that is not like him if you want to. So today, I'm going to close with this. So he goes to say, maybe Ebola compromise with all scent. What is the breath and blood at the deepest and the highest, and to know the love of Christ, which possess, which press knowledge, they that that you may be filled with the fullness of God. The fullness of God is not because I'm preaching. The fullness of God established in my heart when I have the peace that will pass all the understanding. In good time or bad time, I'm going to praise God. I'm not going to stop coming to church because now I don't have money to pay my rent. Some people, they worship only when they pay all their bills. All the bills are prayed, you will see them very high this weekend. And no Sunday come, there is some stuff falling, they don't worship anymore because something touched them. The true worshiper, the worship in good time or bad time. You have the money, you're going to praise him. You don't have the money, you're going to praise him because he's the breath of life uh, that living in you. You're going to thank him. You have it, you don't have it, you're going to thank him. You're sick, you're going to believe and you're going to trust that he's going to heal you because if God can allow it to happen, that means God is going to bring something good out of it. 
A lot of people complain, no, if God allowed me to be sick right now, that means God about to bring a great testimony of healing, uh, and God about to drop the strong power that for people to understand, uh, he's a living God. We're not going to be angry. We're not going to be sad. Uh, if God allowed uh, this car I am driving uh, to broke down, uh, that God have another good car for me, I am not going to be angry. I am going to praise him. People get mad because their car burned down. Praise God because God is going to give you another car. You know? People get mad. If every little thing get in people's nerve. I tell people, I say, let it get in your last nerve so you can get delivered. Because the nerve that people are talking about may be the nerve that God want to remove it out of you. So those are the things that I'm speaking this morning. Take your authority back. You a child of God, God give you a power to read his word and to rest in you. Only if you truly don't have the Holy Spirit in your heart or if you don't know Jesus Christ. But if you're a child of God, you're going to take your authority back. You're going to take authority, we're going to give you respect to your leaders. You're going to respect your leaders. You're going to honor the people. Nobody have to force you to come and clean the bathroom. Nobody have to tell you come and start a prayer. People, you know, man, Lord help me today. And even not going to go in these areas. But I'm just speaking it to you. Take your authority back. The authority will make you looking beautiful inside and out. It will make you look handsome. It will make you looking, you know, power. Even just you little. This young girl was sitting here. I can see all the fullness and power of authority. Nobody's just going to come and throw his stuff in her because she carry all the fullness of authority. She preach and she speak this word. When she send the worship, she send it with authority. She just don't come, yeah, hey, no, no. You're doing stuff like that, devil is going to eat your head. And that, that, I see that from yesterday, I say, man, this young girl is so fire in the Holy Ghost. And continue doing her. May the Lord bless and increase what you're doing her. May the name of God be glorified in this place because of the authority that you're carrying. The authority of believers. She's working in authority. I'm not speaking this to make anything, but I know in my heart and when I see the people of God. I can't lie to you. This is authority. You cannot say, I want to be a worshiper, and you don't have authority. Because the demon even know to worship better than you. And that's why a lot of our children, the demon has told them to become to sing the song of the world and the pens are falling down and all this stuff. And we still go to church, we still pastors, we still leaders, we still, and our children exactly like the world because there is no authority. We're going to take our authorities back. You know? I tell my boys, I say, any girl is showing his breast to you, that's not your wife. And I tell my daughter, I say, the man going with his pen, you seeing his uh, penis, that is not your husband. And that's just the truth. They go out there, they choose what they want because they want to look good for the world. Because my friend is doing it, I want to do it. That is your sin. As long as you're little, you're in my house, I'm feeding you until I feed you the word of God. If you become teenagers, you go out, you do anything still, you kill the people, that is going to be your sin. That's not going to be my sin. It's not going to stop me to preach the word of God. I'm not going to take a shame either. You know, people will talk, 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 talk. That is your problem. That's the sin. I have my own sin. God is going to judge me by myself. If I train my children the ways of God, they choose to be in the world. I can't change them until God, the only one, can change somebody if they want to. I'm not going to take a brokenness. I'm not going to sit here and I'm not going to be mad because my child get pregnant or my daughter is running the street. My boys are not listening. No, I train them. And I give them freedom. Go and do what you want. You want to be a drunker? Go and drink all you can drink. You want to be a prostitute? Go and be and do it because there is a big God that the word and seed in you, God is going to wake you up one day from your drinkiness. You got to get up. The angel of God is going to wake your eye. I don't have to fight. I know the truth. Mama, can I do this? I say, whatever your heart desire, I'm not going to agree with sin. But what do you desire? Talk to God about it. If that's God, let you go and do it. But don't ask me and don't pull me to agree with sin. I will never agree with sin. Never. I tell my children, I say, you want to sin? Mama, can I, I want to put your face in, in my chest. I want to do tattoo. I say, go and read the Bible and bring it to me, what the Bible says. They bring it to me. I'm not putting anybody, you know, people, tattoo is also, but it's in the Bible. They bring, they read it. I say, you read it, what he said. He said, don't do this for your body. I said, okay, you want to do it? You want to go against God, right? The Bible says, if you go against the word of God, you become the enemy of God. So he put this aside. I don't want you to put my face in your chest. I want you to put my face in your heart. Because he tried to 
go and do it. I give them freedom. They have tattoo. They have, that's their problem. I don't want to fight nobody. I have the word of God that I understand. I have the knowledge of God. So don't fight. If your children become teenagers, don't be depressed. You cannot be God in them life. Listen, you're going to let it go. You're going to let God. If you don't let it go, you will come to church and your heart is just mad. And you're sitting here, your brain is thinking, what are they doing right now? I don't know where they are. Maybe they'll go with this bad friend. Maybe they're doing that. That is the enemy. You can come, you can sleep in this church. And pastor can teach you a good word. But you will never receive one. The change will never come from the heart because of the thing that you put yourself into it. We're going to have the mind of Christ. We're going to be transformed, not to conform to this world of sin. And that is the problem. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I just thank you for this word. May this word rest in your people. May give them the knowledge of your name. May your spirit become to dwell in them heart. May you move by your spirit in this place. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you, Pastor. Amen. <laughs>